It says in Psalms 150, I'm going to read it because I want you to understand what we are just singing a minute ago. It says in Psalms 150, praise the Lord. Praise him in the sanctuary. Come on now. Praise him in his mighty heavens. Praise him of this acts of power. Praise him for surpassing greatness. Praise him with every type of instrument in this house. But it also says that everything that hath breath, praise the Lord. Come on, give a shout of praise. Woo! We love you, Jesus. We honor you. We magnify you, God. You are great and mighty, God. You're a king, resurrected king. We thank you, Lord. Woo! I don't know about you, but this morning there's a great anticipation for God to do great and mighty works in this house today. You know, we don't have to wait for the word for God to do something. Are you hearing me? It's in the acts of worship and praise God shows up. It says when we lift them up, he comes and shows up every time. So if you're in this room this morning, let me encourage you. Lean in. Worship. Lift your hands. Praise. Shout. Because our God, this Bible, that this scripture I just read, let everything that has breath, he inhabits the praises of his people. Amen. Come on, give him one time and shout to God. Amen. Amen. Welcome to church on a Palm Sunday Sunday. We're so glad to have you. If you can't just turn around, give somebody a high five and say, God is so good. Amen. All the time. Amen. You may be seated. Such a beautiful Sunday morning, not just because of the weather, because Jesus is alive and he's here in this house today with us. I want to welcome all those that are watching online today. Those are in the building. If you're a first-time guest, welcome to City Life Church. If you are here for the first time, if you don't mind so kindly, on the seat pockets in front of you, all the screens beside me, there's a QR code. Just snap that, scan that, let us know who you are. Not to come to your house to hound you or show up, but more of that, we're just to pray for you. I want to thank you for being here today because I believe this, first time you are a guest, but man, second time you are family. And so, come on, family, give a hand time. I have all our guests in the house, those online, those in the building. If you are here for the first time in this building, on the way out today, out those double doors in the lobby, with this rotunda table there, this, I guess, services, we have a smiling face that wants to serve you, place a gift in your hand just for saying thank you for being here today. And I believe this, you're going to have a great time in the Word today. I was here last service. It was an amazing Word. Get ready. Amen? Also... A lot of great things are happening here. If you, don't, if you don't have the app, download the Silly Light Church app. All the events, calendar events, registrations, all the things that take place are on there, including when pastor speaks, the notes that he speaks on are in the app too, if you didn't know that. So instead of writing all the notes down, go get the app. You get a chance to get all those notes with you, amen? But two things that are taking place that I want to make mention. Number one is our Good Friday. Everybody say Good Friday. That is coming up this Friday here at Del Mabry Campus, 7 p.m. It's a night of worship. We get, we get all the campuses, all the ministries come together just to lift up the name of Jesus. Amen? But also we're going to have communion that night. And so we just want to make it a night. We'll all invite, uh, invite somebody to be there. On your seats, there are, po there are postcards. Please take one with you. Invite somebody, maybe a neighbor, a coworker, a family member, or just a random stranger. Amen? Invite them to church. But that card is a great invite. If you need more on the way out in our uh, guest services, we have more postcards you can take at your leisure to pass them out. But also, everybody say Sunday. It is what we call our greatest night, our greatest day. I love Easter, not because, of what, not because we all dress up and look good. More than just that, we celebrate the resurrection and the life, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen? That's the good news. Amen? So invite you, invite, invite everybody you can out that day. It's going to be great. All of our campuses, we have two services at Wesley Chapel, one at East Lake. We have three here. And for those who don't get up early, we have a 145 service. Just saying. So if you don't get up early, we, we still got you, okay? Come after lunch, come here, and we'll have service too for Easter. We're going to have a great time. Any cheerful givers in the house today? Come on, let me hear y'all. Amen. You know, I've been studying this whole... Um, what, what it means to praise. And this, you know, if you, if you study, there's seven ways to praise. But one particular word I really like is called toda, which means this. It's a sacrifice, 
of praise. Something happens when you present your sacrifice to God. What I love about sacrificially doing something is because it's not your will, it's not what you want, you do it out of the obedience and love for the Father. And that's what giving is. You know, it's a sacrifice to give at times. Come on, let's be real, it's a sacrifice, but when God sees your heart connected with your commitment, something happens. As a matter of fact, I was reading this, the word toda or sacrifice of praise, another translation says offering up to God sacrificially, giving him everything you are, which means everything you are, everything you own, it's not yours. Sorry, guys. <laughs> it belongs to him. But he's only given us the responsibility to be great stewards of what he's blessed us with. Amen? Amen. What I love what happens when we give sacrificially it makes room for God to do what he loves to do best, is to bless us, amen? Not just in finances, health, peace, come on, in our home, in our business, in our ministries, God wants to show up in a mighty way when we offer up to him our very best, amen? So there's four ways to do that this morning. If you are uh, to give today with your tithes or offerings, we have them on the screen. If you're watching online, you can see the giving tab right there. Go ahead and do it right there also. I just want to pray for your giving today. Amen? Let's pray together. Father, we just thank you for the opportunity to give. You gave your very best. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son, his begotten son. That seed that you planted in our life produced a harvest. As much as we plant seed in our tithes and our offerings, it produces a massive harvest also. I pray for every need met over everybody in this room, those in these buildings and those who are watching online. That every seed that's planted in good ground produces a great harvest. I thank you for blessing them beyond finances, meeting them where they're at, Father, in their homes, with their family, with their relationships, Father God, in their business, prosperity that will overtake them, God. And I thank you that you are a good God who wants to show up in the midst of our giving. We offer it up to you today, God. We thank you for all they're going to do in Jesus. And we pray and all God's people say, amen. amen. Jacob, great I am, King of angels, Son of Man, voice of many waters, song of heaven's throne, louder than the thunder, oh, make your glory. Hail, hail, Lion of Judah, let the lion roar. Hail, hail, Lion of Judah, oh, let the lion roar today. He said, Hail, hail, Lion of Judah, oh, let the lion roar. We say, Hail, hail, Lion of Judah, oh, 
because he's still alive today. He's still alive today. Say that again. Let our king be lifted up. So let our king be lifted up. Come on, is your prayer today. Hosanna, 
Now take those hands, put them together, and give them a shout of praise today. Come on, like you serve a resurrected Savior in this place today. Come on, like he's the king of all glory, the undefeated champion, never lost a battle, never lost a battle, never lost a battle. Come on, anybody love him? Thankful, grateful. Father, let your name be lifted up today. Let your name be lifted up today. Let your name be lifted up today. Man, what a start to Resurrection Week. I have to believe some dead things are about to live. Some old things are about to pass away. God's about to open some new things, new seasons. Anybody love him today? It's been a great weekend. It's been a great weekend. Just this past weekend, me and Pastor Casey went separate ways. She went to Niagara Falls, Canada. Got to minister to about a thousand ladies in the freezing cold. I was in Chicago yesterday and I got to speak to about 500 leaders. And I'll tell you, I found out he's got in the cold weather. He's God in the warm weather. I prefer God in the warm weather. <laughs> so it's just been an amazing week. And what an exciting week we are in. You know, for the believer, every day is resurrection day. But this is the week we thump the devil on the head. Remind him that there was a cross, an empty grave, and that the king is on his throne. Anybody believe this week somebody's going to get to know Jesus? I'm believing that lost things are going to be found this week. 
excited about this week. Our Good Friday service, always a favorite. Make sure you're here. All our campuses come together next Sunday, Super Bowl of Christianity, Easter. I'm telling you, invite somebody. Your neighbors that don't go to church, you know, they may be willing to come on Easter. It's a great non non-threatening um, day to invite people that maybe you know you've been wanting to invite to know Jesus and I'm telling you you get them here every year we have hundreds and hundreds of people saved you can make the difference in somebody's life invite somebody to church and change the world it's been an amazing week not only is it resurrection week but you know what this week is it's Pastor Casey's birthday this week oh, we're excited about that Come on, celebrate, give her some love. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Let me tell you, she flew home last night and um, she called me and said, my flight's delayed. I jumped on her Delta app, found out she was going to miss the flight, get stuck in the airport. I, I did get her a room. She didn't have to sleep in the airport. She got up early, early this morning, grabbed a plane, made it before the first service. Would you love on her one more time? Come on, let's pray. Father, we are so grateful for the gift of Jesus, thankful for your presence in this room. So grateful today that you will go home with us, to work with us tomorrow, to our schools, be in our city. And I'm praying that your presence and in this room would activate your word in our life. Let us be reminded this resurrection season once again that Jesus is alive and his kingdom is on the move. Father, bless your word and bless your people. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Come on, give him praise today. We're going to jump into the word again. Grab one of these Easter invites, tell somebody about the good news and change their world. We're going to jump right into the Word this morning. I want to speak to you for just a few moments. One of my favorite verses, it's really an obscure verse, but I really believe this verse is the dichotomy of our journey and really a great illustration of worship. I want to speak to you today about palm praise and willow worship. Palm praise and willow worship. Leviticus chapter 23, verse 40. On the first day, you are to take two branches from luxuriant trees, from palms, willows, and other leafy trees, and rejoice before the Lord your God seven days. Take a palm and a willow and rejoice before the Lord for seven days. Now, when I think about palm trees, I think about sunny weather. I think about Florida. Matter of fact, when I was in Chicago yesterday, I was thinking about palm trees. Because it was cold. And I began to complain about the cold till I began to hear how cold it was in Canada. It was even colder in Canada. But you know, when I think about palm trees, I think about Florida. I think about sunshine. I think about spring break. I think about the beach. But you know, in the Word of God, the palm represented something else. It represented victory, celebration, prosperity, success, health. They would wave a palm branch when a king would come back from battle victorious, signifying that a victorious king had entered the city. They would wave it in moments of celebration, signifying the beginning of a celebration. And I love palm moments of life. But there's also those willow moments. When, when you hear the word willow and the willow branch, we, we think about the weeping willow. It represented defeat, sorrow, mourning, lack, sickness. And here's what the command was. When you come before the presence of the Lord, come with a palm. Come with a victorious praise. But also, if you're really going to understand him in your journey, you have to understand him in the moments of willow worship. 
It's one thing to know him in the moments that he seems to be a good God in our life. Where we feel like we're too blessed to be stressed. We're highly favored. We know all the Christian slogans. And you, you got a Christian bumper sticker on your car talking about how good God is. Got the little sign of the fish. I, I mean, you know, you just feel like it's good. But there are those moments where you have to worship many times through the pain, through the loss, through moments you do not understand. Where the Apostle Paul said, I cannot only know him in the power of his resurrection, but I have to know him in the fellowship of his suffering. Because I'm truly going to know him. I can't just know him on the mountain, David would say, but I have to trust him in the valley of the shadow of death. Because it was in the valley that I learned to fear no evil. I was in the valley that I learned my cup was running over. It was in the valley that I realized goodness and mercy never left me. It was in the valley that I found out he prepared a table in the presence of my haters. It was in the valley I learned to get prophetic and declare, I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. He said, if I only know him in my palm season, but never understand him in my willow season, I've not really fought the good fight of faith. I've just enjoyed the journey. But if I understand who he is, not only in the palms, he, he said, when you come before him, come with a palm in one hand. Come with victory, but also know him in the willow moments of your worship. You know, there's two seasons where you and I are most vulnerable. It's in the season where we have nothing. It's when we're just scrapping, getting by, and we're looking for the answer. It's in those seasons. But the next place I'm most vulnerable is when I have everything. Where I feel like I depend on nobody or not even God. Because I'm so blessed, there's no needs. So there's this journey of faith that you cannot just live in high moments. But you cannot let the low moments devour you and take you out. But you realize that he's God in the good times. And he's God in the bad times. He's God when you have a song. Or he's God when you can just barely utter a hallelujah. He said, if you'll know him in the moments of palm praise, but yet you understand him in the power of willow worship, it changes everything. You know, Jesus gathered a group of disciples, and we're going to talk about a palm moment in their life in a moment. We're going to talk about a moment where they transitioned to willow worship. But Jesus gathered this group of disciples. These were ordinary men. They had issues just like us. He found some by the sea seaside. He found some in the marketplace. He gathered them from all walks of life, and they had issues. They had strengths. They had weaknesses. They had insecurities and frailties and fears. There were high moments in their journey and low moments in their journey, just like us. Anybody in this room have issues? Oh, don't look at me like that. Look at your neighbor and say, I know you got issues. Because <laughs> you're human. I'm human. We all have issues. <laughs> if we did not have issues, we would not need Jesus. But you have issues. I have issues. We're human. We have struggles. We have strong moments, weak moments, frailties. Moments of great faith. And he took these men and he took them on a journey. And at every place he took them, he was building their faith. And every temporary miracle had an internal impact. Every temporary moment and temporal moment in their journey had an everlasting marking on them. He took them from the very first place they encountered where they were at a wedding and they ran out of wine. And the Bible said he changed water into wine. It was more than just changing water into wine. He showed them what you see go in is not always what comes out. He showed them as he journeyed with them and he encountered a man at a pool that was believing for a miracle. But after 38 years he found nothing. He showed them if you're holding on to a word it doesn't matter how long it's been. When Jesus steps into your season. And after 38 years, the man was made whole. Jesus said, gather up all your stuff. This is not your home any longer. He showed them as he walked into the house of Jairus. And there were two types of people. There were these people crying because they believed it was hopeless. And there were people that were laughing because they thought that it was crazy Jesus was there. But Jesus showed them, you walk right past the haters. And shut the door. 
and life will spring forth. And the Bible said six went in, but seven came out as he raised Jairus' daughter. He showed them as he walked outside the city and encountered lepers that were left outside the city, forgotten about, broken and hopeless. And Jesus walked right in and healed them over time and time again, showing them that he was willing to go where no one else wanted to go. He showed them as he stopped by a well in Samaria when nobody wanted to go to the well because they did not like the Samaritans because they thought they were beneath them. But he showed them that the gospel was for everybody. As he spoke to a woman that had issues in her life, the Bible said she had five husbands and the one she was living with now was not even her own. But Jesus gave her a word that changed everything. He showed them as he took a sack lunch and fed 5,000 people that when you put your little bit in the hand of God, it begins to multiply. When you take your little talent and you put your little stuff in the hands of God, he multiplies it. He showed them as he walked on water and he invited them to walk on water that you can walk walk where ordinary people sink. That you can walk where there's no foundation. You can walk where others have went under. You can step out on a word and believe him to be God in your life. He showed them over and over as he calmed the storm with one word. And one word of peace it calmed the raging storm. And they said who is this guy that even the winds and the waves and the elements obey him. He showed them at the tomb of Lazarus, even though he was four days late, that he was willing to go where nobody else was willing to go. But he gets to the tomb of Lazarus, and they look at Jesus and say, Jesus, you're late. He said, no, no, I'm right on time. And he showed them about the timing of the kingdom, that even though it may not look like it on your calendar, he's always on time. And Jesus said, show me where you've laid Lazarus. They said, Jesus, he's already in the grave. They've already put the stone in, and he's been in there four days. He stinks by now. But Jesus said, I want to show you, I do my best work in the middle of the stink, where nobody else is willing to go, where nobody else is willing to walk. He said, move the stone. And the Bible said, when he got to the stone, he got real intentional. I'll tell you, he's willing to walk into your stinky mess today. He's willing to walk into those broken places that no one else is willing to go. They moved the stone. The stench of death came out. Jesus stepped in and said, Lazarus, come forth. And life began to spring forth. He showed them as he walked into a place surrounded by demonic oppression. And he began to drive out demons and revival began to break out over and over. He was building their faith in this journey. And there were palm moments all through the journey. There were testimonies Testimonies all through the journey. There were moments of high faith all through the journey where God was doing a work beyond what they had ever expected or even knew. But then there was a shifting, and we find that Jesus tells his disciples, and we're going to go there in the book of Mark, chapter 11, where Jesus is getting ready to walk into the come into the city and set up his kingdom for his final act. And the Bible said in Mark chapter 11, verse 7 this, They brought the colt to Jesus and threw clothes on it, and he sat on it. And many spread their clothes on the road, and others cut down leafy branches from the trees and spread them on the road. Those who went before, they cried out saying, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the kingdom of our father David that comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Here's what happens. Jesus gets to the city and he tells these disciples, he said, I want you to go find, go to the gates, and there will be a donkey tied. No man has ever sat on this donkey. And he said, when you get to them, I want you to loose the donkey and bring him to me. Sometimes it feels like we're tied and waiting, but I will tell you this. There's always a word that brings our destiny for it at some point. The Bible said they went and they found the colt that was tied there. And just as Jesus said, it was waiting. And then Jesus said, if anybody asks what you're doing with the colt, just tell them the master has need of them. Tell them it's none of their business. <laughs> Sometimes you just have to walk past people. You know, it's not your business. Jesus has need of them. They went in, sure enough, found the colt. Now watch, it's cold. No one's ever sat on this colt. And the Bible said they loosed the colt and they led the colt to Jesus. Here's a, here's a principle in your life. If you're loose but not led, you become a wandering donkey. 
If you're loose but not led, you become a wandering donkey. And I'm telling you, there are some of us that are wandering donkeys right now because you have not been led to the right place and you're not being led in the gospel. He's loosed you and freed you and you're a Christian, but he wants to lead you to the purpose of your life. He said, loose him, but then lead him to me because I have use for him. And the Bible said when they brought the colt to Jesus, they threw garments on the colt's back. Jesus set up on the colt and he begins to ride into the city. And the minute he entered, the city the city goes crazy they've been waiting on the Messiah all the way back from the book of Genesis from the very beginning they've been waiting on the Messiah and the city is erupting when Jesus arrives they begin to cut down palm branches and they begin to wave the palm branches and they begin to cry out Hosanna in the highest they're declaring that the son of David is in the city of David the Messiah has come and I'm telling you there's jubilation in the city I'm telling you, the disciples walk in with their chest out and their head up. They're with Jesus. And I'm telling you, immediately he sets up camp. On the first day, he walks into the temple and he clears out the temple. He throws over the table, runs out the money changers, and declares this house will be a house of prayer for all nations. And he begins to teach and miracles begin to break out. On day two, the Bible says that he curses a fig tree for not bearing its intended fruit. And he shows his disciples that if you do not walk in your purpose, you will live under a curse. On Wednesday, he taught. On Thursday, it gets very intimate. As he gives them the gifts of communion, he gives them the bread that represented his body that was broken. He gave them the cup that represented the blood of the new covenant. He showed them how to serve in the kingdom as he took a basin of water and he began to wash their feet. And it really wasn't about the dirt on the feet, it was about the residue of the past. Because the dirt on their feet represented the places they had walked up to this point. Peter said, you're not going to wash my feet. That's what the lowest of servants do. And Jesus would say, well, then you really do not understand this kingdom. That's what I came for. That's what I'm all about, that old things might pass away. And all things might become new. And in a moment on Thursday, there was great revelation. Peter said, then wash all of me from my head to my feet. Cleanse me. But on Friday, the palm praise began to fade. Because it wasn't a palm moment anymore because the atmosphere began to change. And Pilate took Jesus and brought charges against him. And before long, he puts him before the crowd. And Pilate asked in Matthew chapter 27, verse 22, Pilate responded, What should I do with Jesus, who is called the Messiah? The crowd shouted back, Crucify him! On Sunday, it's Hosanna. It's a palm moment. But by Friday, they're in a willow moment. And the Bible said they took Jesus and they put him on a cross. And the Bible said in agony, he begins to look to the heavens, feeling separation from his father. He begins to cry out. But then all of a sudden, he utters three words. It is finished. And he hung his head and died. And when he said those three words, his disciples scattered because they thought it was over. But they were mistaken. They got caught up in a willow moment. When he declared those three words, it is finished, he was not saying he was finished. He was just getting started. He was just about to release a kingdom. He was about to release power in the earth. It was not over. But he was getting ready to release him into their destiny. But they began to scatter. Why? Because in a willow moment, if you're not grounded you will lose sight of what God is doing and you will not hear what he is saying and they begin to scatter and I'll tell you they took Jesus and on Saturday it was silent because they put him in a borrowed grave somebody asked me one time pastor why did he have to borrow a grave did he not have any money no he was a good steward he would only need it for three days it was like rent a grave he didn't need it. He only needed it for three days. They put him in a borrowed grave. And on Saturday, it was silent. It was eerie silent. But I'll tell you this, silent Saturday was where he was doing his greatest work because he was taking back the keys of authority. And I want you to know this. Listen to me. It may be silent in your life right now. The heavens may be silent in your life right now. Nobody may have a word for your life right now. But I found out he does his greatest work in the silent moments of our life. It's because in isolation, 
isolation. He will bring revelation. And revelation brings transformation. It was silent on Saturday. But I've got good news. Sunday was on the way. And Sunday rolled around. And they came to cry. And they came to mourn. They were in a willow season. They were confused. They thought it was over. Because they heard him say it is finished. But when they showed up the stone was rolled away. An angel was sitting at attention. And he said why do you seek the living among the dead? The one that you are looking for is not here. He has risen. Just like he said. But I will tell you this. These disciples were still caught in a willow moment. And the Bible said they locked themselves in a room. And in John chapter 20, they're locked down in fear, the Bible said. And Jesus walks right through the wall. Whew. It wasn't just brick and mortar he was walking through. He was walking through the wall of fear. The wall of disappointment. The wall of discouragement. The wall of unbelief. Now, if Jesus walked through the wall today, we'd probably come back and have night church. I mean, it would be on, you know. We may even go in extended meeting or something, you know. It didn't even move these guys. Why? They saw him walk on water. They saw him feed multitudes with a sack lunch. They saw him speak to the wind and the waves, open blinded eyes, deaf ears, lame legs walked and leaped for joy. Demons ran and demons fled. When he walked through the door, it didn't, well, the wall, it didn't phase them. He began to preach a sermon to him. He said, peace be unto you. It didn't move these guys. The same message that calmed the wind and the waves. The same message that caused demons to flee out of a young man. But this message did not work on them. But I'll tell you what did. He said, I'll tell you what, I know you're in a willow moment right now. Let me show you what I did in my willow moment. And the Bible says this. He looked at them and said, touch the nail prints. Let me tell you, there's something on the other side of a willow moment of your life. Touch my riven side. Let me let you touch the scars of a willow moment. I've got good news. There's resurrection power on the other side of the willow moment. And the Bible said they begin to handle him. They begin to feel him. And when they did, faith began to rise up. And the Bible said he breathed on them and said, receive the Holy Spirit. I'll tell you this. When you inhale what God has exhaled, it changes everything. I'm going to say that one more time. When you inhale what God has exhaled, it changes everything. That was not just a breath. He didn't just breathe on them. I'll tell you what it was. It was the Ruach breath of the kingdom. It was that same breath in Genesis chapter 2 where he picked up a lump of dirt in the very beginning of the book and he worked with the dirt. I'm so glad he still puts his hands on my dirt. I'm so glad he still works with my dirt. I'm so glad he puts his hand on dirty places. And the Bible said he worked with that dirt until the dirt looked like him. And then he breathed on it and it became a living being. It was that same breath in Exodus where the Bible says the people of God were stuck at a Red Sea but Moses stretched out his staff and God breathed on the waters and the people of God walked through to victory. It was that same breath in Chronicles where David once again was fighting the same giant and the same battle, the Philistine. But God says I'm going to adjust your army but do not move till I show up. And the Bible said after David, after David adjusts he heard the rippling of the wind in the top of the mulberry trees and he knew that God had showed up. It was that same breath in Ezekiel chapter 13 37 where there was a valley of dead dry bones and all of a sudden a breath began to blow and bones began to come together and flesh began to cover those bones and in a dead valley an army began to rise up. It was that same breath in John chapter 3 where Jesus said you can't put it in a box, you can't put it and you can't contain it but if you will follow it, it will lead you into all revelation. I'll tell you it was that same breath in Acts chapter 2 where the Bible said and suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind and it filled the whole house and it sat on each of them and power began to release. I'll tell you what that breath did. It took ordinary men and transformed them into world changers. It took ordinary people and began to change them into mighty men and super women of faith. It took weaknesses and made them testimonies. That breath caused Peter to be the mouthpiece of Pentecost. Now listen, if I was Peter, uh, picking somebody to speak on behalf of the church and it was a staff member, it would not have been Simon Peter. He always said the wrong thing. The Bible said he even cursed a time or two. There's hope for some of you out there. He had a bad mouth. But this is what the Bible said. He was chosen on the day of Pentecost. 
to speak a word that birthed the New Testament church. Why? Because the breath of God flips the script. The breath of God takes weaknesses and makes them strength. It takes the enemy's weapons and puts them in your arsenal. And what used to be your ceiling has now become your platform because one breath changes everything. And I've got good news. The breath is blowing, but it's not coming from elsewhere. In the old covenant, it came from somewhere else. But in the new covenant, the believer has it within them. That's why David said prophetically, let everything that hath breath praise the name of of the Lord. The minute you open your mouth and sing Hosanna in the highest, the atmosphere begin to change. The minute you rose up and worship today and the minute you open your mouth, whether it was on pitch or off key, it begin to shift the heavens. It begin to silence the atmosphere. And I've got good news. Whether you're in a palm moment right now or a willow season, there is a king that is high and lifted up and his train fills the temple. He's never left the throne. He's never left his job I want you to know and he's on the move 2,000 years later he's still declaring 2,000 years later he's still moving 2,000 years later he's still alive and well and he's reigning in all power and all authority come on jump to your feet all over this room take about 15 seconds put your hands together tell the king of all glory the king of all glory the king of all glory Come on, somebody wave that palm in the air. Oh, but I believe that there's probably some willow worshipers in this room. You just barely made it today. But the good news is you made it. Huh. You're here. And by the very fact you're here, and by the very fact you've got breath in your lungs, so when you come before him, come with a palm in one hand. I love palm moments, but I find it's where he perfects my faith is in the willow season. When I can't trace him, but I trust him. <laughs> Not only in the power of your resurrection, but when you have to walk through stuff to get to me. When I don't know, but you do. When I can't see, but you have it all worked out. It's easy to praise him in the palm season of life. But I'm talking about when you're just hanging on. And in the depths of your spirit, you find a hallelujah. In the depths of your spirit, you find something that rises up through the pain. He says, when you come before him, because here's what I know. You've got a palm in this hand and a willow in this hand. If you leave the palm season, but you've got a hold of the willow season, it'll lead you back to the palm season. So I just come, and whatever the enemy brings my way, because there is an adversary. Anybody here when I brought the live lion to Easter? Yeah, we had some that probably left and never came back. We're getting ready to pray. Several years ago, I brought a live lion on Easter, and I, and I preached about a message about even though you're the king of the jungle, if you live in a cage, in this line, after about six services, he just looked at me. Like, I've heard this before. It's not that good. While he thought I was playing with him, when I'd walk like this, he got up and started walking back and forth. People got big eyes. The handler had to come over. This lion was famous, been in a bunch of movies. It was a famous lion. Now, now PETA didn't like it. They started sending me all these crazy emails. But we blessed the lion that day. <laughs> Rented the lion. It was packed in here. And, uh... But I asked the handler, I said, you, know, you think the lion might roar today? He laughed. He said, no. He, said, he may whimper a little bit, make a little noise. He said, but if he roars, it will clear out the building. I said, Really? He said, oh, yeah. He said, you know, the roar of the lion is what makes him the king of the jungle. It's not that he's the strongest animal. It's not that he has the most might. It's not that he's the quickest animal or the slyest animal. But he's got a paralyzing roar. He said, matter of fact, a full-grown lion, you can hear his roar from up to five miles away. 
way. Listen, that's why the Bible said the enemy moves around like a roaring lion. And if you don't have your willow in your hand and you're not grounded in your worship, the minute he roars, you are paralyzed by fear. And the minute you are paralyzed by fear, he can pounce on you. But when you've got a willow in the hands, oh, I may be walking through a tough season right now, but I've still got my worship. I may not be in the Hosanna moment right now, but I've still got my worship. I may not be in a palm season right now, but I've still got my worship. I may not be at a high moment right now, but I've still got my worship. I may not have it all together right now, but I've still got my worship and I know that he is still on the throne come on if you're in a willow season I celebrate with all those in the palm season I pray God just keeps blessing you I pray he blesses you beyond what you know any any palm people in the house right now yeah bless highly favored but maybe you're here today and you're in a willow season come on if you're in a willow season throw your willow in the air right now I'm gonna pray over you today come on we're gonna worship for just a minute the team's getting ready to come team's getting ready to come come on you may be in a willow season maybe you're at home today right where you're at throw your throw your hands up I've got my willow now, now, now come on if you believe in God's gonna take you to another palm season throw your palm in the air as well throw them both up now all my palm people join in lift your hands lift your hands we're gonna worship for just a minute we're gonna pray I'm telling you God's getting ready to do something this resurrection week I'm telling you I feel that there's an anointing on this week there's a favor on this week. There's a new season for somebody in this week. There's an unlocked promise, an unlocked blessing for somebody in this week. I'm telling you, God's about to rearrange some things, flip the script. For some of you, he's about to go before you and make your crooked places straight. For some of you, he's getting ready to bring clarity in your confusion. Some of you, he's getting ready to lift the lid, the things that have held you back, the places that have told you no, the voices that have tried to make you think that your greatest days were behind you. I'm telling you, you're coming out. This resurrection season is going to be a resurrection season. So we rise up with the branches today. If we're in a palm season, we celebrate. If we're in a willow season, we worship. And we declare to the God that is on the throne.
personal today. everyone in this room to pray. If you're at church online, pray it with me. We're going to pray a prayer the very first day of this resurrection week. We're just going to invite Jesus in. You say, oh, Pastor, I'm already a Christian. We're just going to renew that commitment, and we're going to make it easy for those around us today. Amen. If you're here today and you need to know Jesus, he's the one that helps you get from a palm season through a willow season. His presence in your life. We're going to pray a prayer and we're going to invite him in. And you said, Pastor, I've been a Christian a long time. We're going to renew that commitment today. But just maybe you're away from Jesus, sir. Maybe you've never prayed this prayer. I want you to pray with me. And then I'm going to pray a prayer of blessing over you today. And then I'm going to invite the altar workers and the ministry team to come forward. And if you need special prayer, as we release everyone, you can come forward. But just bow your heads with me. Say this. Say, Father... Thank you for the gift of Jesus. Thank you for sending your only son to die for me so that I might have eternal life. And today, I invite Jesus into my life to be my Lord, to be my Savior, and I ask him to wash me and forgive me of all of my sins and I commit to allow him through the power of his spirit to work in my life daily and father I pray now that as I walk out of this church I walk in my purpose and my assignment that Jesus has declared for me amen and amen come on celebrate that Listen, at the end of service, we're going to put some QR codes on the screen and let you know where you can go. If you prayed that prayer for the first time, let us get some information. We have some Bibles for you out in the information area. We want to walk this journey with you. But now I want to pray a prayer over you today, a prayer of blessing. Because this is what I know the writer said in Romans chapter 8, the same power. Somebody say the same power. Same power. Oh, no, say it like you got it. Say the same power. Same power. That raised Christ from the dead. It's in, me. it's in me. 
that's what allows you to move from a palm season to a willow season to a palm season through a willow season from a palm season through a willow season and sometimes when it feels like the willow season will never end it gives you the power to rise up and stand in the power of the kingdom because it's in you not around you not at City Life Church not on an appointment on Sunday morning but you'll take it home with you today it'll go to work with you tomorrow it'll go with school with you tomorrow it's resident in your life the same power so Father I pray right now that that power is activated and it will release a blessing and a favor it would declare Father as they go that an assignment has been unlocked and a purpose is before them and Father as they walk out their purpose by the power of resurrection I declare that every crooked place is being made straight every mountain is beginning to move every valley is being brought up and Father you are making a way before them places they have not walked Father you are opening doors things that they pray about father you are working in and they are being stamped and marked with the yes of heaven they are marked with the promise they are stamped with the promise the yes of God and the amen of the kingdom is on their life and I declare by faith and the word of God that greater days are before them and their best is yet to come and where they're headed is better than where they've been and father we receive that come on with a yes and an amen today a yes and an amen. We're going to invite our altar team forward. We love you. Don't miss Friday night, Good Friday. It's going to be an amazing night. We love you. Be blessed. If you need prayer, come forward as we worship today.